All right, so I'm going to talk about pervasive video links. Uh, by video links, video deep links, I mean a URL that takes you to a player, to a video, and jumps you to a time code. These have been around for a long time. I think Google Video had them in 2006. You can, you can uh, get a link from YouTube with the T equals 30 or whatever the time code is, but they're not common, they're not pervasive. And I think that that's going to change a bit over the next uh, indefinite period of time. Um, <laughs> And please ignore the small words in the bottom right corner of my slides, which are the notes that I better remember to say. So the reason this is going to change, I think, is a couple of months ago, Google announced that they will, that search, search results will provide links to key moments within videos based on time stamps provided by content creators. They're calling it key moments. And uh, it is actually live today. I'll show a couple of screens of what this looks like. Here's kind of a zoom in of the graphic that they provide, provided in the uh, press release um, or the blog or whatever it's called. Um, so tonight, I'm going to talk first about what the requirements are. And these are not uh, complicated technical requirements. Uh, but I'll take you through those and show you what it's like. Uh, that'll be part one. Part two, I'm going to show you a demo of some software that uh, will um, help publishers create these time stamps. And then uh, the third part, I'll talk about some of the uh, initial technical implications that are likely to take place. Um, all right. So first, to kind of set up what we're what we're talking about, um, what we're used to is you go to Google, you do a search for cat, you see some results, you click on one of them, that takes you to a page. Sitting on that page is a player with a video that you can then click and play. That's great. What's new is Google will include in the search results these key moments. If you click on those, you'll be taken to the page, but then the player will seek to the right time code and uh, depending on the browser and your uh, prior history with the browser might, may even start playing. So if I do a search, uh, I brought up a m mobile simulator here. The reason I'm doing this, and I'll mention this again, is uh, they're rolling it out on mobile first. So if I do a search, I come down here, I'm looking in the search results, I'm getting down to the video section, okay, there it is. Now, I can jump right to eight minutes into this video, or I'll click here, two minutes and 28 seconds. All right, now it's taking me over to YouTube, and the video is muted, but I can see that I'm two and a half minutes into this video. Pretty straightforward. All right. What is happening here? The publisher has provided some metadata on a page and Google's bots grabbed it and that's how the publisher told Google what to present in search results. So what is this metadata? Um, in the press release it has links to the uh, specifications and it talks about video objects. Video objects are defined in schema.org. Schema.org is a uh, uh, WC3, WC, what is it? W3C, supported community that defines structured data around uh, to describe properties of video objects and clips and a whole bunch of other entities and actions and relationships and so on. So for schema, for, for what we're talking about here, the idea is that you define on the page, let me emphasize that this is this is uh, metadata you're putting on the page. It's not in the manifest, it's not part of the source of the file, it's just on the page level. And you're defining the video object with some straightforward properties like the name, description, uh, content URL. There's a bunch of other properties in schema.org that are available, but you only have to worry about five or six of these for a video object. And then for the has part, 
this is where I think it gets a little more interesting. That's, this is where you're defining the clips with a name, a start offset. These are in seconds, end offset, which is optional. You don't have to specify that, um, but we'll come back to it. And a URL, and this is the URL that Google is going to link to, and then somehow, magically, the video will play. So a bit about the, um, the, the Google program, and then I'll show a demo of, of creating some timestamps and looking at the metadata. Um, so Google's rolling it out incrementally uh, on mobile first, as I said. I have no idea when they're making it more broad. They're working with a uh, limited group of content providers, but there's a form online, and I can send it to you if you can't find it. Uh, where you can submit if you're interested in being a content provider and working with them to have this type of markup. Uh, the videos, your videos have to be free to access and not require a login. And they're encouraging uh, uh, publishers other and other search engines to use this schema. Um, and what they're doing to kind of jumpstart it is uh, and, and I should emphasize that this is the video search team. When I was talking with Prashant, he, he, he had to take about 20 minutes at the beginning and say, no, 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 no. Video search is separate from YouTube. You keep on thinking they're the same. This is the video search team, but they are working with YouTube to, um, what they'll do is they'll scrape whatever the video description is for any kind of list of times and descriptions that seem to be related to time codes and then include those in search results. What's going to happen next? I think publishers are going to want tools that let them render the metadata for them and seek and track how people are using it. I think end users are going to be interested in the in having access to those while they're watching it and being able to share those, not just right now they're they're Per their spec, they're only kind of ephemerally in the search results, and then you leave and never see them again. Um, I think they're going to want to share those, see them, and even create their own. I think uh, this is going to rejuvenate some video search engine optimization uh, activity. Um, I'll jump through these. This is just sharing and creating. Uh, as far as machine learning and transcripts and and, and, and captions, yes, that's going to play an important role in identifying or locating the, the moments that matter. That's kind of a separate subject than the deep links themselves, but yes, machine learning is going to be really cool there. Another element that I anticipate this announcement from Google will move us toward is in the requirements, they talk about how you include the link, you include the uh, start offset, and they don't require the end offset. But if you, as a publisher or as the player, use the end offset, now you've got a defined kind of sequence of scenes or an EDL, uh, uh, edit decision list for videos in the cloud which I think becomes kind of interesting. You're jumping from point to point. It might play, jump to the next scene, jump to the next scene. And maybe that even is happening involving multiple assets and even assets that are live and streaming currently. So you could catch up to the game or even see some, some of the plays from the last couple of games leading up to the current live feed. Uh, and then the last speculation is just really asking the question, when anyone has, can instantly reference any moment in any video that they're entitled to, um, what, how does that change how we entertain ourselves, how we educate ourselves, how we communicate and cooperate with each other? I think it really opens up an uh, a really exciting use of video that goes beyond uh, uh, what Clement was, Clement's first so slide, which was just the assumption of the, the standalone video by itself on a page. That's, that's blown out of the water. All right, let's skip that. So technical implications. Um, what's happening is there's a lot of, there's a bit more interaction between the page and the player. 
uh, not necessarily new technology, but technology that you could kind of ignore and not worry about, but now you want to uh, be a little more explicit with. So in coming into a page from Google, you may want to, as that demo showed, scroll down to the right player, and uh, there might be multiple videos on one page. So in your, in your deep link URL that you provide to, you, to Google, you may want to specify how you can know where or how to find the right video on the page. Um, you're going to want uh, PI access. You're going to want to allow the page scripts and other uh, elements uh, API access to the players, especially through iframes, and that becomes uh, there. There, it's surprising how much, uh, how many layers of iframes quickly get onto a page, especially with something like WordPress. Um, and so, the enable JS API is one of the parameters of your iframe is going to play an important role. Some of the promises to know when you're getting and setting timeframes is going to be uh, important. In the player itself. Kind of this, this point's made before, but you may want to um, make uh, user experiences that let end users see and share and create their own moments, whether that's an overlay or swiping to, to move to the next highlight or uh, snapping to along the scrub bar. Uh, I don't think that autoplay is affected a great deal or that this announcement affects autoplay behavior a great deal. It becomes a little more relevant because you are expecting to be taken right to the video and right to the moment. So there's not kind of a, a, a graceful, hey, I got you to the page, now it's up to you to, to uh, get the video going or find it. Um, but as, as far as the technology goes, I don't think anything changes in terms of the browser uh, doing its own calculations to determine if it should start playing or not. Um, maybe grace, sorry, maybe seek becomes a bit more important to have a graceful experience. Maybe you play with the volumes a little bit so that it's not just a, a, a jump. Um, and maybe you're, uh, some of the smart players are working to help buffer non-contiguous segments. Now, in trying to think, okay, let's, let's really stretch uh, at least my understanding as far as what could be uh, something down the pike. A, bi a, a good stretch here is imagine that you've got a key moment and it's really, really quite popular. Um, and it is in the middle of the video. You're going to want to potentially align the beginning of some segment with that so that if you're serving that out millions and millions of times in a very short time frame, um, maybe, it, maybe it makes sense to align the beginning of the segment with the key moment. I don't know, I anticipate that happening and I think it may just be, uh, you know, the, the, the precedent or the, if not the precedent, which, which uh, controller kicks in last, wins. Um, but ideally, ideally, what's happening throughout the stack and the, and the publishing and the design of the page, you're taking into account some of these factors that just didn't, didn't matter before. I think you're absolutely right, but I think the noise would initially be really high in that there'd be a lot of stuff in the video that could potentially be interesting. But what should show up in a typical Google search result? I think for a while anyway, it's going to take the John Henry approach of just manually uh, at least building the training set that is used for the machine to kind of get a sense of what matters and what matters to different people. Quick, quick thought on that though is one of the interesting things is you might have the same video on different pages with different highlights identified through the metadata on those two different pages. So you might have you know, a football game that's, that's a, uh, hours long. Uh, you might have an edit that's one minute long, five minutes long, 20 minutes long. You might, you might have dynamic edits based on uh, fantasy players. Um, so your solution may be kind of a, uh, to, to not have all of the data in one place represented, but to figure out 
and maybe this circles back around to, to where you're going, is uh, it might be a number of uh, pages that I can serve see it being both. Where the human, yeah. the, the author's categorization of time codes, text priority, is bolder text gets, gets uh, priority in search results. But if it isn't there, or the author hasn't got time, then yeah. you could have your automatic one. And the automatic one could look at a confidence interval and also come up with, it's got a taxonomy of popular items or objects that it knows, it's already indexed the page. It understands the page pretty well. Yeah. And this, it could, based on the relevance of the video to that, it could maybe not flood you with too much irrelevance. Stuff. Absolutely. And, and the ML could use some other signals like uh, when people seek and, and manually go back and okay. use that. Nice. I mean, anything can be a weapon. What I think is more likely is that it's going to be a little more akin to the search maps that you see that come up in search results, where here's the site, here are a few of the key pages or key sections of this site that you may want to jump right to. Um, and uh, you're right, uh, right now it's just the first video that shows those. Um, and I think that kind of triggers the, the, the competitive aspect of the search engine optimization. But total speculation here, I imagine it being something that becomes less prominent but always accessible in search results. And so it just kind of saves you a couple of seconds or clicks to get you right to the part that you're interested in. Thanks.